Okay, so um, so what we're doing here is we're we're installing this Anaconda distribution of Python, right? So Anaconda is essentially Python in this case Python two point seven, Python two point seven, and then it's a bunch of packages associated with Python two point seven. So we have like SciPy, NumPy, Pandas. These are, these are just individual Python libraries that are used for science programming, math programming, and statistical programming, okay? Uh, one of the packages is scikit-learn, which depends upon these other packages, okay? So scikit-learn is the one we're trying to get to. It just happens that this, this Anaconda distribution has all the stuff we need at one time, okay? All right, but we have to install it in a very particular way so that we ensure that we're using that particular installation of Python. What can happen is you can have many different versions of Python on one machine. There are ways to separate them out. The easiest way for our, for our purposes is just to install it as admin and just force everybody on the computer to use this one version because that's the one we're going to be using, okay? All right. downloaded the uh, the Anaconda installer okay so that's right here we have Windows notice it says Windows and we have the 64-bit Python 2.7 graphical installer okay so that is in our folder okay so we're gonna go to our desktop our downloads folder okay the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna install Anaconda okay so to do that, now remember, I'm logged in as an administrative user, okay? So on our computers in the lab, you're gonna log in as teacher, okay? That's, that teacher, even though it's not called administrator, there's two kinds of users on our computers. There's standard users and there's administrators, okay? Student is a standard user, teacher is an administrative user. In this case, you have to be logged in as teacher to do what we're gonna do here, okay? All right, so we're gonna double click the exe file to install. Okay, it's going to load kind of slowly, but which is fine. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click agree. We're going to put in for all users, okay? This is where the installation changes because we're an administrative user. For all users, we're going to click next. Okay, now a good way to tell if this is already installed on your computer is in this next step here. Uh, in the next step, what's going to happen is it's going to say, hey, do you want to um, do you want to create this folder? Okay, so it's, its default folder is C colon backslash anaconda. So it puts it, we call this at the root of the C drive, right? So it's right after the C colon backslash is the root of the C drive. Okay, so it's going to make a folder called Anaconda. So it's going to test whether that folder is already there. If it's already there, it's going to give you an error and say, hey, that folder is already there. So at that point, you would know that this is already installed on your computer because that's the only reason why that folder would already be there or one, the only logical reason. Okay, so for me, I've, I went and deleted it earlier so I know that it's not there. Okay. All right, so on this next step, add Anaconda to system path environment variable. This makes it so you're um, basically that something that needs Python can find it on the computer. This is basically registering the location of Python with the operating system is the system path environment vari variable. Next is register Anaconda as the system Python 2.7. You also want to do that. Okay, so those both of those are checked. We're going to click install. Okay, so now it's going to go ahead and start setting up. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over here we're going to let that run, okay, so we're going to let the installation run, and now we're going to go and we're going to unzip our tutorial file, okay. Here is what I would like you to do. Okay, you guys already have 7-zip. Seven 7-zip seven is the best archive utility for Windows, okay. It's a program 7-zip. You can download it at download.com, okay, which is a reputable download location. Okay, it's free. Um, it handles all, almost every, um, um, archive file format that you might encounter, for example. Um, anyway, so of which zip is the most common for Windows. Okay, so we right click on it, we go 7-zip, and we go extract to, and we just choose this. It just creates a folder name based, based upon the name of the zip file. So we right click on the zip file, go 7-zip, extract to whatever the name of the folder is. All right, and it's gonna do its thing. 
Okay, so now we have these two things running at this point. We have our two things running. We have our we have our tutorials extracting. We have our anaconda setting up. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pause the video here. Back as soon as um, as soon as these things are uh, finished. Okay, so our installation of Anaconda is complete. Uh, we're going to go ahead and click Next, and we're going to click Finished. Okay, so now we're going to we're going to. There's a couple different ways to launch. Can launch a command window. Or, I'm sorry, command prompt. We can type in cd space, and then we can basically change directory, which is cd space, to that directory, which is notebooks, right, inside our tutorial folder. And we can type in ipython space notebook, and we will get an ipython notebook to come up. Okay, so essentially it launches, it will launch then in our browser. It may take quite a long time, apparently. Okay, so that is one way to do it. We're not going to wait for it to launch. Okay, the other way to do it is to actually just use Windows. And this is kind of the easier way to do it, so let's do it this way. So we're going to go ahead and click on... So in Windows 8, I have to do this, uh, I have to do this search option. Uh, in Windows 7, you should be able to just go in... Um, you should either see IPython in the Start menu after doing that install. Um, or you should be able to uh, to type it in at the bottom of the start menu, so, or sorry, at the Windows menu. So we're going to we're going to click on IPython Pi 2.7 Notebook. Um, anything that looks like this, IPython would probably just do the same thing. I'm just going to click on the Notebook one, and we're going to wait for it to launch here. Okay, so essentially it's going to go ahead and launch in whatever is your default browser, okay? So let's say that your default browser is set to Internet Explorer and you don't want to use Internet Explorer. You can just copy this, uh, this URL here. I know it doesn't look like a URL, right? It doesn't start with HTTP. But this is just saying what this URL is. It says localhost colon 8888 forward slash tree, okay? localhost is the is the domain name essentially of your local computer okay it's just a way to refer to your local computer called localhost all one word lower lowercase colon after the colon is the port number okay so we're connecting to localhost on port 8888 that's where the ipython server is running and then we're on tree okay so let's go ahead and find our notebook so notice that basically this is just your standard notice how similar this looks to our um, computer, right? So if you notice, look, it says desktop documents. So really what we're looking at here, uh, it just starts wherever your username is. Notice notice whatever your user is here. See how we have contacts, desktop, contacts, desktop. So basically IPython is set to just go to your home folder on Windows. Okay, so we know where our, our folder is. It's in downloads, right? So we're going to click on downloads. It's going to open. Okay, notice that we have our, see how one says .zip and one says doesn't say .zip, so we're going to click on the folder, right? Okay, so we're just going to keep clicking down into it until we get to notebooks. Okay, so here's our first notebook. So we basically just click down into downloads, right where we'd unzipped our tutorials, and then for the particular one that we're going to run, it's tutorial setup.ipynb. Okay, so we click on that, and here is the actual IPython notebook. Okay, so here it is, and uh, and and uh, you're going to become a pretty you know kind of an expert on running uh, IPython. Uh, basically, what this is, it's a way for you to look at co the IPython code and the output of that code in one place in a browser-based format. So it's it's pretty fun. Okay, so that's our setup. Uh, good luck.